I'm Sophie. I'm a television beat reporter for the Daily Californian Arts and Entertainment. Hi, I'm Arjun. I'm also a TV beat for the Daily Cal. And today we are here to discuss the steaming pile of shit <laughs> that is Riverdale's second season. I feel like I can't call it a steaming pile of shit because I love it so much, but at the same time I can recognize when something that I love dearly is nose diving. N nose diving into... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think part of the reason why I don't find this season as well put together as the first is because of the undercooked writing. I totally agree. I think the writers don't plan ahead. I think they let plots go at the drop of a hat. I think the characters come off really flip-floppy. I think part of that is because the episodes aren't organized around specific narratives. They're just trying to like give at least five minutes of screen time to every character. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't really give enough um, space for the characters to develop or for like long arcs to develop. Um, I think that's part of why it seems like the characters like fall in and out of love with each other and like fall in and out of friendships really, really quickly. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think part of the reason why it feels so inchoate is because the characters seem to have lost the motivations that made them tick in the first place. Take Jughead, he was supposed to be this outcast, now he's just um, this sort of social activist for the serpents and he's just appropriating their struggles even though he's not actually faced those struggles himself. So I just feel alienated by the direction that the, his character is taking this season specifically. Yeah, I totally agree. I think having him be a loner at the beginning made him interesting. It made him someone who was tonally very different from the other characters, and that was what I really liked about him at the beginning, was he had this like Rod Serling, Twilight Zone, creepy narrator, um, untrustworthy narrator potentially kind of vibe that I really liked. Um, but plus, I also really like, sorry. Plus Cold Sprouts, yeah. Yeah, I also love Cold Sprouts. Yeah. Um, but I think something that I really liked about the second season, which is the moments that I like are rare, um, but I really like the episode where Jughead, like you said, appropriates Tony's grandfather's narrative, and Tony fully calls him out. Like, she's like, you can't just take stories as if they're your own. You can't um, victimize people who don't see themselves as victims. And then she got to step up, and he stepped back. Um, and I really liked that episode. Yeah, I, th I agree with that. I think that was one of the clear signs of a light that Riverdale can, you know, sort of go into, but it should actually take the baton and go towards the light. Um, another issue I have with Riverdale's second season is the complete bum bungling of uh, Dark Betty. I don't like the fact that they have reduced this darkness and depression that she was struggling with into a sexual fetish. And I think that they're somehow devaluing Reinhardt, Lily Reinhardt, who plays Betty, uh, her real struggle with anxiety and depression by making her character so, um, the darkness inside her character uh, so underrated. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think that it's really important to address both teenagers' mental health and teenagers' sexuality, but the show is conflating the two in a way that's yeah. really like harmful and problematic. Um, especially because even though Lily Reinhardt, the actress that plays Betty, is 21 or 22, her character is supposed to be 16 years old, and yet she's a webcam girl and she pole dances. And I think that, you know, there are ways in which she's enacting her agency in her sexuality, um, but there are also ways in which that's kind of exploitative of her character, especially when they're representing it as an extension of her mental health and not allowing her to healthily explore her mental health or the options that are available to her in terms of health. Yeah, um, I think, and we've been talking about this before, but you mentioned that the fact that she doesn't get to spend as much of time with Veronica is a reason why um, her storyline specifically feels like the weaker part of this season. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, part of what made season one so awesome for me um, personally was that it really highlighted the solidarity between its women characters or its young women characters. And this season, that has kind of fallen to the wayside. side. Um, Betty and Veronica's friendship is no longer at the fore. Um, there's a lot less coming together of those women characters. And like you said earlier, like a lot of Veronica's plotline has now become centered around the men in her life, which is really weird because she was a really powerful character, an independent character before. 
Yeah, Veronica's storylines are definitely more male dominated. It's either a variation of Archie Kings is so angelic or my dad's a mobster, boo hoo. And th- it seemed like it had dramatic conflict before, but now it just seems like uh, they're spinning their tracks while they figure out what to do with her. I think they're getting into this pattern of introducing plots that they think are going to be really interesting and like spicy, um, but then they drop them. And in the process, we lose a lot of the characters and the depth that we, in those characters that we loved in the first place. Yeah, I think uh, the Agent Adams fake out was one of the examples of that. Just because I read in an interview they were going to make him a real FBI agent, but just because of how poorly that storyline uh, tested with the viewers, they just retconned it and made him some sort of capo. Um, which sort of makes sense and gives me hope that they somehow just listen to fan criticism and sort of dovetail into a nicer direction for the remainder of the second half. Um, and I think if they just continue listening to fan feedback, the second season has the potential to be um, a little better than it is right now. I agree. I think they're headed toward the light and they haven't quite reached it and the light may be more garbage piles on fire. We shall see.